Hey everybody, um, we're still working on hypothesis testing with one sample. Um, I wanted to look at a one sample proportion um, and then the other case when we don't know the, uh, the underlying uh, population standard deviation. Okay, so um, basically the, the way, where these things add into is that they change, okay, they change a couple of the steps. If you recall, I laid out five steps for hypothesis testing. First was formulate your hypotheses. The second was choose a level of significance, um, which we usually give the name alpha, or use the symbol alpha, choose level of significance. The next one is to choose your test statistic. Right? And a test statistic, if you recall, is the, uh, the characteristic of your sample, um, or a formula you can apply to your to some sample data that will give you a nice distribution right um, step four once you've chosen a test statistic is to collect data and compute the test statistic and then last but not least step five is to take your value from your test statistic and evaluate your test statistic figure out what to do so to evaluate the test statistic and answer the question essentially. And what we looked at so far was one sample or one population mean uh, when we know the standard deviation of the population sigma known. And in that case, um, our hypotheses usually look like this. They look something like H0. So your null is either going to look like this. Mu x is greater than or equal to mu 0. Mu, uh, eight, mu x is less than or equal to mu 0. Or possibly mu x is equal to mu 0. Those are the three types of tests you can look at. And they're all about mu x. That's the key here. What we're really talking about is we're making statements about a given population mean. Right? People in... North Carolina are taller than six feet on average. People in North Carolina are shorter than three feet on average. People in North Carolina are exactly the average person of average height in North Carolina is exactly five foot four and a half. Right, that's what these are all saying. Um, then what we do is we choose our level of significance is alpha, and usually it's not always the case, but usually alpha equals one of these: oh, 0 0.01, 0 0.05, 0 0.10 or 0 0.20, and the most common of these is this one right here. Usually we test at a 5% level of significance. Um, for one sample of mean sigma known, our test statistic is going to be the, always the same. It's a Z test statistic, and it's going to be x bar minus mu 0 over sigma x over the square root of n, which is really just the score formula applied to the sampling distribution of x bar under the null. So we assume that this is true. We assume that this is true, and then we uh, use the score function to get to our uh, to a test statistic. Um, we collect our data, and usually the question then will give you enough information to get x bar, or it'll tell you what x bar is. If you have a data set, you calculate x bar, um, you figure out what your hypothesis is, uh, and then you plug in your population standard deviation and your sample size, and you figure it out. And then once you get through those, and you evaluate the test statistic, what you're doing then is you're taking whatever your test statistic is and saying okay well if it's a left tailed test is our z in here somewhere right if it's a right tailed test is our z in here somewhere and then if it's a two tailed test is it in either of these right is it there or there and that's what evaluating this test statistic is it's basically saying um, if the true sampling distribution is centered around our mean then how far away is the x bar that we pulled is it weird or is it somewhere kind of in the middle-ish area, where it, which is not weird? And that's what hypothesis testing is about. Okay, now, if we are in a situation where we have a sample proportion, well, essentially we're doing the same thing. Now, instead, our step one is going to involve hypotheses that look like this. P is greater than or equal to P0, or P is less than or equal to P0, or p is equal to p0. Okay, that's the stuff that it's likely to equal. Um, okay, step two is still going to be exactly the same. We're just going to choose an alpha. Hold on just one second.
step three is going to be a little bit different, but not so different. Essentially, we're doing the same thing. So before we did was we applied the score function to the sampling distribution of, uh, of x bar, but now we're going to apply the score function to the sampling distribution of p bar. And it will give us something that looks kind of familiar. Right. So if you remember, where's my, there we go. Z, the score function is this. Z equals x minus mu x over sigma x, where x really just fills in for whatever, which is the same as p bar minus mu p bar over sigma p bar, because we're just plugging in p bar instead of x. And if you remember what we learned from sampling theory, what this says is that if we take any given value of p bar, um, the mean of that is going to be p, right? the mean of that sampling distribution is going to be the true population proportion, and the standard deviation is going to be this. It's going to be the true population uh, proportion times 1 minus p, all over n, and that whole thing under the square root sign, because the, the thing inside the square root sign is the variance. Now, because we're talking about a hypothetical distribution, what we're saying is uh, this is the population proportion that we're assuming. So we put a little zero there, so that p zero is uh, where, there we go. P zero is the true population proportion under the null, meaning under the assumption that h zero is true. It might not be true, right? We're test, that's what we're testing, um, but we're going to give it the benefit of the doubt, so we're going to act like it's true for a little while. Okay, so then step four, what we need to get um, for these is we need uh, p bar, um, some p0, and n. And then once we have these, we can use these to get z. And I'll do a practice problem, so stay po not, not on this video, but if you stay posted to my video uh, feed, econdrd, on Dr. D. Um, I'll post a video doing one of these type of problems. Okay, then step five, we evaluate Z, just like we did before. What this means is we have a left tail test, then is Z in the left tail? If it is, we reject it. We reject the null. Left tail depends on the size of alpha, what we mean by left tail. But if it is in the left tail, then we reject the null. If it's not, then we don't reject. Right tail test z in the right tail. And then a two tail test, well, z in either tail. That's where extreme values of z will lead to rejection. Okay, so that's one population proportion. Um, what if we don't know? What if we don't know sigma x? We've looked at this with uh, confidence intervals, but you can look at the sigma x unknown case. Now, if you remember, what we did when we worked with confidence intervals is we said, okay, so this is the true sampling distribution of x bar. x bar, it's centered around mu x. It's got a standard deviation that's related to the true population standard deviation and the sample size that we're drawing our sample mean from. And if we know some stuff, then we can relate it to, that's a terrible normal normal curve, but I'll just run with it. <laughs> we can relate it to the standard normal distribution, which is good, right? The problem is, if we don't know this stuff, what we can do, or what we can't do, is we can't know the shape, right? If we don't know this, we can't know the location. If we don't know this, we can't know the shape. Okay, well, what we can do is we can assume the location. That's what we do with mu zero, right? With hypothesis testing, we assume the location. But we still have to estimate the shape. So this is kind of equal to s over the square root of n. It's not going to be exactly right, though. So instead of using a, a z distribution with a standard deviation, what we're going to do is we're going to replace this with a t distribution, which looks something like that, kind of, um, and which has n minus 1 degrees of freedom. And that's our approximation. That accounts for the fact that not only are we, you know, making an assumption about the location on the x on the x-axis, right? Not only are we making an assumption about where it is in this direction or this direction, but we're also working from an estimate of s uh, or of sigma. We're using s as our estimate. That's our sample standard deviation. Okay. Hopefully, we're familiar with that by now. Um, but what we know is for any sample. 
uh, for any sample mean, sorry, we can generate we can generate a value of t, and that's what we did with um, that's what we did with confidence intervals as well. And what we do is we use kind of a modified score function that gives us a t, and t is equal to x bar minus mu zero over s over the square root of n, and this has a t distribution with n minus one degrees of freedom. And that's useful information. What this means is that that is that that test statistic, this test statistic right here, has a nice distribution. Right, we can look it up on a t table, or we can use uh, Excel to figure out what what it turns into. So for our uh, for our hypotheses, our hypotheses are going to be the same as they were with a one same as the sigma known case, because we're still talking about uh, mu x, right? They're still about mu x. Uh, step two is going to be the same. Step three, the test statistic now, is going to be a little bit different. And the key here is if you have a question that says sample standard deviation, or if you're in a situation where you know the sample standard deviation but not the population standard deviation, which is like any time in real life generally, you're going to use S, right? which also means that your test statistic has to be the one that has an s in it. It's going to be x bar minus mu zero over the quantity s over the square root of n. That's easy enough. For step four then, we need those four things. We need x bar, mu zero, s, and n. It should look like, yeah, there you go, mu zero, s, and n. Once we have those, we're golden. Um, you use these to get a t test statistic. And then step five, we evaluate t. Now, unlike uh, the z distribution, usually it's harder to find a p-value, but uh, with a t-table. So what we do is we bound the p-value. We can say it's great. The p-value is greater than something. It's greater than some area, and less than some other area. And the reason for that is that on a t-table, uh, we don't have that much information about each individual. Uh, value of t. Um, we only have six pieces of information about each curve, not each value, but each curve, each t curve, right, because they each have a different degree of freedom. So we can bound those, but we can't pin pinpoint it too finely with a t table, which means like in class. Um, we can use Excel to get there. You can use t distribution in Excel. You can also use any other statistical software because that stuff's written right in there. Um, but in general, you know, you can bound the t value. We have enough information to do to do inference. And then once we do that, you know, you can also use critical value approach, um, which will give you the same results. Um, and then we decide whether or not we reject it. But the big differences here are uh, well, step three and step three and four, right? Step three and four that involve the test statistic, and that that's pretty much. And then step five, we're just using a t table instead of a z table. Okay, so that's how we work when we don't know the standard deviation of the population. For proportions, it's fine. It's built into no, into our assumption about the population proportion. For uh, for in sample means, it's, uh, it's it's also fine, but you just need to modify your test statistic a little bit. Um, and it's good to be familiar with both the, the standard normal curve and the t distributions. So, so that's how we do it. I'm going to post some practice problems shortly uh, to illustrate, and then hopefully. If you have any questions, you know, leave comments, let me know, and I'll get back as soon as I can. Thanks. Bye, guys.